Have you ever stopped to consider why a cup of coffee costs more than a banana? Welcome to the fascinating world of microeconomics, a realm where the seemingly ordinary decisions of individuals and firms take on a new dimension of importance. It's a field that delves into the very heart of our everyday life, helping us make sense of the decisions we make, the goods we buy, and the services we use. Microeconomics is the study of the economic behavior of individual units of an economy, such as a person, a household, a firm, or an industry. It's like peering through a microscope at the economic landscape, examining the smaller, interconnected parts that make up the whole. One of the key concepts in microeconomics is the interaction of supply and demand. This fundamental principle helps us understand why prices fluctuate and how markets function. Imagine a bustling marketplace. Each stall represents a firm, and each customer represents an individual. The price of each item, be it a banana, a cup of coffee, or a pair of shoes, is determined by the interplay of supply and demand. On one side, we have demand, driven by consumers' desire to buy goods and services. On the other side, we have supply, influenced by producers' willingness to sell. When the quantity demanded by consumers matches the quantity that producers are willing to supply, we reach what is known as market equilibrium, the sweet spot where the price is just right. But of course, this is a simplified version of reality. In the real world, factors like production costs, competition, and consumer preferences can cause shifts in supply and demand, leading to price changes. So, why does a cup of coffee cost more than a banana? It could be due to the costs of production, coffee beans might be more expensive to grow and process than bananas. Or perhaps it's because of consumer preferences. Maybe people are willing to pay more for a cup of joe than a piece of fruit. Just as coffee and bananas have different prices, each product in the market has its own story to tell through microeconomics. Why do people buy more when the price drops? Well, it's not rocket science, it's economics. More specifically, it's the law of demand. This principle is at the heart of economic theory and it's pretty simple. When the price of a good or service falls, people tend to buy more of it. On the flip side, when prices rise, demand usually decreases. Picture yourself in a candy store. If your favorite chocolate bar suddenly becomes cheaper, wouldn't you be tempted to buy more? That's the law of demand in action. It's the inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded. But the law of demand doesn't operate in a vacuum. There are other factors at play. Think of the demand curve as a snapshot of demand at different prices, but this curve can shift due to various influences. Let's talk about a few. One key factor is income. If people's incomes increase, they may buy more of a product even if its price hasn't changed. That shifts the demand curve to the right. Conversely, if incomes decrease, people might buy less, shifting the demand curve to the left. Changes in tastes or preferences can also shift the demand curve. If suddenly everyone decided that kale is the new superfood, demand for kale would increase, shifting the curve to the right. And then there's the impact of the price of related goods. If the price of a substitute good, like a different brand of chocolate bar decreases, people might switch to that instead, reducing the demand for your favorite chocolate bar. So, to sum it up, the law of demand states that when prices drop, quantity demanded increases, all other things being equal. But remember these other things, income, tastes, prices of related goods, can shift the demand curve, changing the quantity demanded even if the price remains the same. Remember when the price drops, consumers shop. But also remember that the law of demand is just one piece of the puzzle in the complex world of economics. How does a rise in price affect the quantity of goods suppliers are willing to produce? This question brings us to the law of supply, a fundamental concept in the world of economics. Picture this, you're running a bakery. If the price of your best-selling bread doubles overnight, you'd probably want to bake more of it, right? This is the essence of the law of supply. It states that all other factors being equal, an increase in price results in an increase in the quantity supplied. In other words, if the price goes up, the quantity of goods that producers are willing and able to sell also goes up. But what happens when other factors aren't equal? What if the cost of flour, your main ingredient, shoots up? Or what if a new bread-making machine comes out that doubles your baking speed? These are the kinds of factors that can shift the supply curve. Let's start with production costs. If the cost of producing a good rises, the supply decreases. This is because the good becomes less profitable to produce, and suppliers are less willing to make it. On the other hand, if production costs fall, the supply increases. The good becomes more profitable, and suppliers are more eager to produce. 
Now let's consider technology. Technological advancements can increase the efficiency of production, making it cheaper and faster to produce goods. This can shift the supply curve to the right, indicating an increase in supply. On the flip side, if technology becomes outdated or obsolete, the cost of production can increase, shifting the supply curve to the left and indicating a decrease in supply. In a nutshell, the law of supply is a simple but powerful tool for understanding the relationship between price and quantity supplied. It helps us predict how changes in price will affect the amount of goods suppliers are willing to produce. And when we factor in things like changes in production costs and technology, we get a more complete picture of how the supply of goods can change over time. As the price rises, suppliers' production drives. This is the law of supply, an economic principle that affects us all, from the baker to the bread buyer. What happens when the amount consumers want to buy equals the amount producers want to sell? Well, my friends, we have arrived at a fascinating concept known as market equilibrium. Market equilibrium is like a perfect dance between supply and demand. It's the point where the amount of goods or services that businesses are willing to sell aligns with the amount that consumers are willing to buy. And at this point, the price of the product or service is just right. It's not too high to deter buyers nor too low to discourage sellers. Imagine this, you own a bakery and you've baked a hundred loaves of bread. At $5 a loaf, you sell all hundred loaves by the end of the day. The next day, you decide to bake a hundred loaves again, and once again, they all sell out. This is a classic example of market equilibrium. Your supply of bread meets the demand of your customers at a price that works for both sides. But what if something changes? What if the price of wheat goes up or a new bakery opens down the street? These shifts in supply and demand can disrupt the equilibrium. Let's say the price of wheat increases. You might have to raise the price of your bread to cover your costs. At a higher price, some of your customers might decide they don't want to buy your bread anymore. Demand decreases and we move away from equilibrium. Or consider the new bakery scenario. With more bread on the market, there's a higher supply. If demand stays the same, this could lead to a surplus of bread and a drop in price. Again, we've moved away from equilibrium, but here's the magic of the market. It self-adjusts. Prices fluctuate, producers and consumers respond, and eventually, a new equilibrium is reached. It's a constant dance, a never-ending cycle of adjustment and balance. At equilibrium, the market clears, and everyone gets what they want. It's not always a smooth journey, but that's the beauty of economics. It's dynamic, it's fluid, and it's always in motion. Why are some goods more sensitive to price changes than others? It's a question that has puzzled many, but the answer lies within the concept of price elasticity. Price elasticity measures the responsiveness of the quantity demanded or supplied to a change in price. It's a fundamental concept in economics, and it's about to become your new best friend. Let's start with the price elasticity of demand. If the price of a good goes up, you would expect the quantity demanded to go down, right? But how much it goes down depends on the price elasticity of demand. If it's high, a small change in price leads to a large change in the quantity demanded. If it's low, the quantity demanded doesn't change much when the price does. Now, why would this be the case? Well, it depends on a few factors. One of them is the availability of substitutes. If a good has many substitutes, consumers can easily switch to another product when the price goes up, making the demand more elastic. On the flip side, if a good has few substitutes, consumers have no choice but to continue buying it, even at a higher price, making the demand inelastic. Another factor is the proportion of income spent on the good. If a good takes up a large portion of a consumer's income, they will be more sensitive to price changes, and the demand will be more elastic. But if it's a small portion, the demand will be more inelastic. The same principles apply to the price elasticity of supply. If a producer can easily switch to producing another good, the supply is more elastic. If not, the supply is more inelastic. So price elasticity doesn't just measure how quantity demanded or supplied changes with price. It also tells us about the characteristics of goods and the behavior of consumers and producers. Price elasticity helps us understand the sensitivity of demand and supply to changes in price. It's a powerful tool in the hands of economists, and now, in yours too. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.